and it's going to step over to the next side. It's going to flip the other direction. And you're going to call this 180 degrees. Okay, so, um, so what we're saying is number ones are going on first, and we'll just say that it's at zero degrees. So if we, if we drew it, you could just draw it like this, except that this would have to be plus, and this would have to be plus. So this would be zero, and this would be 180. So that's the way we want it to switch. We want all the blue dots to switch first in that sequence to allow the batteries to go to 10 volts and dump the potential across the 5 volts. So, what I want to make very clearly now is how you're going to hook these to the transistors. We'll, we'll still use this here. And how they're going to hook to these transistors are, are these emitters are going to go to the bases. And the collector. They're going like this to the MGL device. So, collector, emitter, base, emitter. So this emitter is going to drive the power transistor base, and then this emitter is going to be split and the collector between the batteries at opposite ends. But I just want to show you the general hookup. So we'll let you get that. That's how they're going to hook up. They're going to hook just like that between the batteries. And we'll go back and hook them up just with the batteries so you can see. But I want you to have this sequence first. The sequence we want. This is what Ronald Brett wanted switched. This one, this one, and this one on one side. And he wanted the opposite side off and the batteries in parallel. And then, because these batteries had to go into series, so if we look at it this way, if we just use these as two batteries, this sequence right here, this one and this one, is exactly what you're looking at right here. So this transistor is emitter. That would be this transistor right here. This emitter is going to the negative terminal of the first battery that's 5 volts or 12, whatever you're going to use. And the collector is going to the positive of the bottom battery. And the optocoupler then is inserted in between here. Optocoupler's emitter driving the base of the power transistor and the emitter going to the negative here, and that's the very first sequence. That's what puts these two batteries in series to get the 10 volts. Other side is off and in parallel, and it's gonna dump that 10 volts across, and you're gonna take the potential that's left after it charges puts the charge on the opposite bank of batteries over here. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next sequence, okay? Okay, so the next sequence is building the oscillator, and here is the chip number, SG3524. Okay, it's a 16-pin chip, and this is exactly the way we want it hooked up to fire this sequence. From 16 to 2, there's a 4.7K. Now, pin number 16 on the SG, 
3524 is an internal voltage regulator at 5 volts. So this becomes a voltage divider in the amplifier in here and balances it. So from 16 to 2, we want a 4.7K. And from 2 to ground, this, this whole line is ground. And you can see that these grounds are all indicated that they're the same ground by the color. All right, so we want from pin 1 to ground a 4.7K. We want everything divided in half. And we want from 2 to ground a 4.7K. And for the, uh, the timing, you may have to fiddle with this a little bit um, because of the, uh, the timing on some of these chips. Um, these only come in two different models now. You're either going to get this in a TI or you're going to get it in a, um, I forget what the other one is right at the moment. But it's, they're oddball chips. And uh, you may have to play around a little bit with this division, this divider up here, and the capacitor down here. You want as low leakage capacitor as you can get. And basically you want to go as slow as you can go, like this one's going over here, to, so that you can watch the sequences back and forth and what it's doing to the batteries in the system. And so this is exactly the way we want it hooked up. So this one turns on. Here's S1, S3, and S6. Right back to the original Ronald Brent circuit. And he's indicated that right here, that S1 is going to go on. S3 and S6 are going to fire together. That's these here. Now, we put... 330 ohms up here that are going into these collectors here because this is our current limit for these LEDs that are you're going to use in the optos. These are the optos. These are the pin numbers again. Okay, so we're firing S1, S3, and S6 together. The first pulse. Then the thing's going to flip 180 degrees. It's going to fire S2, S4, and S5. So what you're going to get across the battery is once again is this rocking wave. It's going to go this direction and then it's going to go that direction. So what you're going to see is a rock between the batteries. Between these batteries, you're going to see these batteries rocking and I'm going to uh, show you that one more time. rocking motion. Now, once again, if you're familiar with our energy series, once again, what's actually happening is that the battery is being pulse charged backwards and forwards through the load on this sequence. So, um, we can have, we can have the difference between the batteries once the battery charges. We get the little bit of different potential difference which you can use, which is indicated by the yellow light. And I'm sorry about the radio, bring the radio back.
let you listen to it one more time. I had to get it out of the way. What I want you to see, oops. <laughs> what I want you to see is there's no batteries in the radio. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this energy from the negative terminals from the switch. So when I get away from it and get away from the wave, it gets clear. So now that you've seen this has all been running in the background this whole time, we'll measure the batteries one more time. We'll just get rid of this radio because... I have clip leaves on it and I don't want to short anything out. And you can see it's definitely off. That's what was left in the capacitor. And it's nothing there.